We'll call the meeting to order and have a roll call by the secretary. Mr. Here. Mr. O. Here. Mr. Love. Here. Mr. Burridge. Here. Mr. Huckabee. Here. Mr. Alexander. Here. Mr. Burgess. Here. Mr. Regan. Here. Uh, Jerry declares a quorum to conduct business and want to welcome everybody to the meeting and we'll introduce the director for further introductions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. I know there's a couple of items on the agenda that we're going to take up in just a moment, but something we didn't put on there that we need to take care of first, I'm going to ask Mr. Tagler to come up and introduce, make an introduction. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Today I would like to introduce our uh, new legal uh, chief of legal and business services division uh, manager. Come on. This is Miss Lisa Enders. She was recently named as the division manager in January of 2018. Prior to joining ODOT, uh, she has served as the assistant director district attorney for the Oklahoma County Civil Division. She began her legal career in the public sector in 2006 as the Assistant Attorney General for the State of Oklahoma in the, in the Litigation Division. She was born in Oklahoma City. She completed her Bachelor of Science in Speech Communications in 1992 from Oklahoma State University. And in 1995, she received, received her Juris Doctor from the Oklahoma City University School of Law, graduating magna cum laude. Enders and her husband, John, live in Okarchi and have one son. So if you would, please help me welcome Miss Lisa Enders. You want to say something? Huh? You want to say something? Say what you like. I don't know. Uh, commissioners, I just wanted to say uh, it's an honor to be selected, and I look forward to serving you for many years to come. Thank you. Mr. Secretary. Thank you for letting us slip that one in. Uh, Every year, Oklahoma, is a, Oklahoma DOT is a proud sponsor of Keep Oklahoma Beautiful. This year, we were nominated uh, again for a Keep America Beautiful Award, and I'd like to um, introduce Jeanette Nance to come up and make that presentation. Thank you, Director Patterson, Chairman, members of the Commission. I love getting to come here. Um, our biggest program is the Great American Cleanup, and we that's statewide, and we're able to do that because we partner with the Department of Transportation and work with you all and your district offices and your county offices to get the supplies that the communities who participate with us the supplies they need. Um, that includes <laughs> trash bags and safety vests and gloves and water for their volunteers. We could not do that without the Department of Transportation's cooperation and partnership. Um, I want to give you some numbers from the 2017 Great American Cleanup just to help you understand how important this program is to keep Oklahoma beautiful to Oklahoma city citizens entirely and to the Department of Transportation and other state agencies that partner with us. Um, the number of volunteers that participated that were reported back to us, I have to admit not all of the communities that participate with us and receive the supplies report back their numbers to us. Um, but nearly 50,000 volunteers statewide, 3,000 miles of streets were cleaned and 1,400 acres of public lands were litter abated. There are lots and lots of numbers here. I'm not going to read them all to you. The number I really want to tell you about and I'm most proud about, and again, remember, not all our communities um, participated in the wrap-up that reports numbers back. 100% of the counties in Oklahoma participated in the Great American Cleanup. That's a community in every county. That's miles of road in every county, saving the state of Oklahoma in excess of $8 million in government cleanup costs. So thank you very much. Um, 
so when this happens, and we're so excited about it, we know we need to tell Keep America Beautiful about it. So we nominate the, Depart the Department of Transportation and the Oklahoma Turnpike Authority for their partnerships in getting those supplies out and the word out and volunteers out. So for the third consecutive year, the Department of Transportation has been awarded the Keep America Beautiful Award for State Partnership. And I would like to present that to the chairman and the director. Well, thanks to our staff and the Turnpike Authority, their management and staff, we're award winners again. Mr. Chairman, I'm getting Carry closer to the, to the horseshoe here. <laughs> I don't want to be that close. <laughs> um, Mr. Chairman, our next presentation is one that it's really fascinating to me. We've had and been a part with Poe Engineering for scholarships to Oklahoma, University of Oklahoma and Oklahoma State University for 35 years. 35 years. We've never really talked about it. I was um, at the scholarship awards in, at the University of Oklahoma and I mentioned to Jim Benson, who's gonna come up here in just a minute, the head of Poe Engineering, you know, we ought to say something to somebody. I mean, this is a collaboration collaboration between the department and certainly Poe is funding the scholarships but they include us in it and I just thought it was something that after 35 years we ought to mention it to somebody besides ourselves. Mr. Chairman if I could if I could have Jim Benson come up and say a few words. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. As Mike said, for the last 35 years, we have partnered with the ODOT Director and the ODOT Senior Staff uh, in awarding these scholarships to each at uh, OU and OSU. We're bipartisan in nature. Um, over the years, uh, there have been 12 either present or former uh, ODOT employees that have uh, been awarded these scholarships. The most uh, Prominent one, unfortunately, she's not here uh, today. Back in the day, uh, Don Sullivan was a two-time two-time winner. Uh, we go through a process. To, uh, we get uh, we receive applications from both universities. Uh, we review them and select the winners. And I might tell you that the competition is very fierce. There's a lot of just a lot of really really bright kids at both both universities, and it and it bodes well for our profession in the future. Um, and I'd like to introduce to you our four winners this year. Uh, I will generalize by saying they all have extremely high uh, grade point averages. Uh, they're not spending all their time in class. They're all involved in multiple ex extracurricular activities, uh, not only on the engineering side, but non-engineering, just in the general university community. And they all work either during the summers or, and or during school to supplement their education. So we think they're very, uh, four very deserving winners. First, uh, first is Colton Hamill from OU. Colton's a senior from uh, Choctaw. Uh, his interest is in uh, structural engineering. Our, our next winner is Braden Kellogg from uh, Talala. Uh, you might recognize that name. He is uh, Ed Kellogg's uh, grandson, uh, former Division Eight engineer. Uh, Colton is a, uh, or, yeah, or Braden, excuse me, is a sophomore, uh, and he is, uh, his interest is in general civil engineering and with an emphasis on structural. Next one is uh, Emily Avery from uh, Plano, Plano, Texas. 
Uh, her interest is in uh, geotech. She's a junior. Uh, she worked at the ODOT Oklahoma City residency uh, last summer. And the fourth one is uh, Madeline Beekler. Madeline's a junior from Owasso, and she also has an interest in structural. So I'm very pleased to introduce these bright young students to you this morning. Uh, and we're, we're pleased to have, an, have awarded these scholarships. Uh, we didn't, can you tell us, uh, okay, OU, OSU, OU, OSU. OSU. I just wanted to make sure we had our numbers right. Okay. It, you got two strikes against you. I don't know if anybody told you that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This what is, a great group. This is Further comments. Mr. Chairman, could you join us sure. for a picture with the students? Jeanette, thank you for coming today, and also thank you scholarship award recipients for coming and for Poe's great efforts along with allowing the department to be involved for these long years. Uh, what a great, great uh, program and achievement. And Don should have been here. I mean, y'all need to get on her. Um, item number 15 is the approval of the minutes of the Special Transportation, Transportation Commission meeting of January the 3rd, 2018. Do we have a motion? Have a motion second. and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, please vote. Motion passes. We'll move to the consent docket, which is items 16 through 18. If any commission member would like to move any of these items off and talk about them separately, we'll do so by unanimous consent. Otherwise, we'll hear a motion for the consent docket, items 16 through 18. Motion to approve. Have a motion. Second. Have a second. Any discussion? Please vote. I actually oh, have a hold up. Chairman, sorry. Uh, could you explain how the speed zone revision, how, how does that work? How do we decide whether we're going to do it? And I know everybody probably would have a little bit of interest in understanding how that works. Um, the I'm talking about kind of in general, not necessarily yeah. talking about specifically okay. these. Uh, typically, and in, in this case here, and excuse me, good morning, Mr. Chairman and uh, Commission members. Um, in, in general, uh, what we do, we, we had a request for this particular one, and what we do is we will go out and do speed studies uh, out there where we collect uh, at least typically 100, 200 different vehicles. Uh, we'll run the analysis on that. We'll also look at uh, collisions uh, in the area, driveway densities, traffic, uh, look at the situations out there and make an assessment uh, what the speed should be. Uh, typically, we base that on the 85th percentile, but we do take into account, uh, like I said, the uh, collisions and other factors. 
And they generally originate with a city or, or typically, from ourselves. But uh, typically, they they do. Uh, occasionally, we'll, we will uh, look at some areas of interest. Uh, a lot of times, in this particular case, we had a uh, highway that was uh, originally a two-lane, no-shoulder uh, facility. Uh, construction improvement came in, made it a five-lane facility. Uh, so we go back in there and take a look at those and, and make sure we have the appropriate speed set. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So generally speaking, a city or a town or some community requests a study or there's some construction event where we relook at it. That's what generally happens. So I have a motion and a second. Uh, motion has passed. Consent docket has passed. Out of 19 is engineering contact tracks. Mr. Tiegler is going to present those and he's going to, after he gets finished with that, he's going to present item number 20, the engineering contract supplements. Okay, thank you. Good morning again, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Item 19 are my engineering contracts. I have one this month. This is a statewide, all districts, off-system bridge inspection contract. Uh, every uh, time we have this contract, we have to uh, inter inspect our bridges on a cycle of about two years. This contract is with our CED uh, circuit engineering districts two, four, seven, eight, and three, and the aggregate uh, not to exceed amount for these contracts is two million five hundred ninety-seven thousand dollars. Commission approval is recommended, and I'll answer any questions if you have any. We have a presentation. Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve. Second. And a second. Any discussion? Hearing none. Please vote. Motion passes. Move to item 20. Item 20, I have four parts this month. Part A is a statewide, all districts. This is our on-demand airborne LIDAR mapping contract with bearing tree land surveying and quantum spatial. The total aggregate increase is $1 million. Part B is a statewide, all districts. This is our on-demand biological assessment, <coughs> monitoring and surveying of threatened and endangered species, bald eagle and migratory birds. These are with firms Blackbird Environmental, Garver, HDR Engineering, Mead and Hunt, and Olson Associates for an additional $500,000 total uh, aggregate increase for these contracts. Part C is also a statewide all district off system bridge inspection uh, supplement. This is uh, the same, our, on, our off system bridge inspections as well. This is with uh, consultants. AIA, Burgess and Nipple, CEC Corporations, Garver, Guy Engineering Services, HW Lochner, Infrastructure Engineers, Kimley Horn, MKEC Engineering, and Walter P. Moore for a total aggregate increase for these contracts, $449,000. And finally, Part D, Oklahoma County, this is Commission District 4. We've uh, previously authorized Poe and Associates to perform engineering and final design plans for the reconstruction of the I-35, I-240 interchange. This uh, supplement not to exceed amount is for $33,255. And the projects are in the eight-year construction work plan scheduled for a let date of 2021. Commission approval is recommended and I'll answer any questions if you have any. Item 20A through D has been presented. To have a motion to approve. Second. I have a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes. Thank you, sir. Item 21 is the letting. Ms. Helms, you are it. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Agenda item 21 is for the final April tentative May, tentative June bid openings. The department requests and recommends approval of this item. Nobody else has trouble with that microphone but you. Every time it gets you. You've heard the presentation. Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. Second. I have a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, please vote. Motion passes. Thank you. Item number 22 is the change orders with a cumulative total of 75,000 or less. It's information only. Mr. Leonard is available to answer questions. If you have no questions, we'll move to change orders greater than 75,000. Are there any questions on item 22? 
Hearing none, uh, Mr. Leonard will move with your presentation on item 23. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, I'd like to present item 23, parts A through W. These are the change orders on projects that have a cumulative total of change orders in excess of 75,000. Uh, your approval is recommended, but I'd be glad to answer any questions. Both items, 22 and 23, has been discussed in the committee meeting uh, prior to this meeting. Uh, there are no changes or recommendations in the committee meeting. Motion Watch. to approve. We have a motion to approve. Second. I have a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, please vote. Motion passes. Thank you, Mr. Leonard. Thank you. Mr. Dels, I know, is here, and there he is. Good morning, Commissioner. He's going to present the awards. Yes. Uh, item number 24 are recommendations from the January 18th AM and PM bid openings. It is recommended that the following items from the January bid openings uh, referred to by call order be awarded. This call order is 103, 106, 109, 112, 118, 121, 124, 133, 136, 139, 142, 145, 148, 151, 157, 166, 169, 178, 181, 184, 187, 190, 196, 204, 211, 220, 223, 226, 232, 235, 241, 244, 247, 250, 259, 268, 274, 280, 292, 298, 310, 325, 328, 331, 337, and 340. It is recommended that the following items from the January bid openings referred to by call order be rejected. Call orders 172 and 175 in lieu of the combined project and also call order 229. This includes recommendations for award and your approval is requested. Heard Mr. Delsa's presentation of the awards. Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. Second. I have a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, please vote. Thank you, Mr. Dells. Your Thank item you. passes. It's like, it's like the, to announce to the, to the, I want to say congregation, but to the <laughs> audience. Um, the report I just read is available on the guard desk. You know, you didn't see everybody passing things out today. Uh, those will be available from now on at the guard desk as you guys walk out. Thank you. Thank you. So anybody can have a copy of those awards and the information that goes with them at the desk out here at the front, if that wasn't clear. Uh, we have a special item settlement for damages to state property that the comptroller is going to present. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the commission, again. Agenda item 25 is for a settlement for damages to state property. On March 25th, uh, Mr. Westbrook was traveling eastbound on I-40 in Hinton in Caddo County. Uh, he entered into the lane, striking a truck and exiting and re-entering, hitting another vehicle and ultimately damaging the guardrail. The cost to the guardrail was $1,200. Mr. Westbrook's insurance was shelter insurance and the policy limit is $25,000. Total damages exceeded the policy limit and the insurance company is offering to pay $250, uh, leaving a balance of $950, which is uncollectible, and it, it is considered to be administratively burdensome to pursue the remaining balance, and the department requests and recommends acceptance of this settlement offer. Thank you for that description. Motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. Second. And we have a second. Any discussion? We've done all we can do on that one. <laughs> Please vote. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Director and Secretary Patterson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. I wanted to share with you some recent information. Last week, uh, we had our budget hearing, a joint budget hearing with the Senate and the House Appropriations Subcommittees for Transportation. 
I think the, the hearings went well. The, the hearing went well. I was glad to have it as a joint meeting with both House and Senate members. In that, uh, we gave our report, as we usually do, about the success that we've had over the last year and for the last decade, uh, noting how much work we've done, again, on structurally deficient bridges. And for your information, the last count I had was we're down to 194 from our 1168 back in 2004. So we've made great strides. That puts us at about 3.6, 3.7% of our bridges are structurally deficient. We're moving toward that less than 1%. We feel that pressure. N know that we do. We have a lot of bridges that are under construction right now. And, uh, but we're, we're going to make our less than 1%. We're going to be top five in the country going from 49th to the top five. But in that discussion, we also, with the House and Senate, we also discussed tax revenues. You know, I explained what our fuel tax looks like today. It's 17 cents for gasoline, 14 cents for diesel, 49th in the country. Alaska's the only one lower than us. And this afternoon, apparently, this, the House is going to take up in their special session a revenue measure that will increase both of those amounts by six cents. So put it at uh, 23 and 20. 23 for gasoline, 20 for diesel fuel. Now, if you recall, uh, a year ago, Governor Fallon came out with that, a very similar, similar proposal to increase fuel tax and give it to all to the Department of Transportation. She's done that again, and that's the genesis of a lot of this conversation. Certainly the group of business leaders that have come together, the Step Up program, includes that six cent fuel tax increase. But I want everybody to remember that neither the governor nor the legislature, while we expect to get all of that six cents, we don't expect to generate any more revenue. We will not have any additional funding over and above what we have today. But do know that at some point, we hope with that revenue measure and the other revenue measures, that maybe we can stop the diversion of transportation funding to fund other core functions of government. The last six or eight years, it's been 839,000, excuse me, $840 million of transportation revenues have been used to fund other parts of state government. It's really our intention and our hope that we can stop that because we know what we could do with $840 million. We know the things that we could accomplish, the projects that have slid and as you know, in October, we brought an eight-year plan to you that projects slid out of the eight-year plan. And we don't want that to happen. So whatever we can do in the, in the way of revenue generation that will stop the diversion of transportation revenues to other, gov other parts of government would prove to be very beneficial for the state. I was in Washington, D.C. last week, had a meeting with White House staff, Senate and House staff, talking about the Trump proposal for infrastructure. Please remember infrastructure is more than highways. It's more than railroads. It's more than highways, railroads, and ports. And it's more than airports. It includes the electric grid, water, sewer. It's the whole thing. So when President Trump is talking about trillion dollars, trillion and a half dollars. Not sure where that's going to land. I heard two numbers last week. So I guess we'll know today, but wherever that lands, know that there'll be a portion of it for transportation. And I do know for a fact, in a visit at the USDOT last week, they're pushing a lot toward rural transportation improvements. So that should be beneficial for us here in Oklahoma. We're one of those bridge states where we have a lot of people moving through our state, and so they're using a lot of the rural highways. And so 
We've talked about the condition of our pavement on our rural two lanes or four lanes outside of the interstate system, and it's not good. It hasn't been good for some time, and it's not good now, but we're going to, we need to stay focused on that, and hopefully this package will help that. So we'll see what that looks like, and I'll, I will brief the commission after, later on this afternoon or possibly tomorrow with what I learned out of the, out of the phone call. But some of the, the conversation that we've heard recently from the federal government is, well, the states need to step up. Well, if you look at transportation funding in this country, the states have stepped up. The notion that the states haven't done anything in the last 10 years is false. It's just, what did we do last week? What did we do last month? Not much, but if you look at Oklahoma, we've provided an additional $575 million in less than 10 years. So it's a, it's a situation, I don't, I don't want any commissioners to begin to hear that rhetoric and not remember what Oklahoma did. Other states have been increasing fuel tax to provide additional transportation funding. 2004, before we had the 575, you'll remember our eight-year plan was 100% federally funded. 100%. Today, we're more like 50-50. We have to keep that in focus as you hear this conversation going on in D.C. that the states need to step up. Sure, we need to step up. We'll, and, I th and I think states will continue to step up. But the notions that we haven't is false. One of the other, one of the other things that we talked about at, with the Joint Committee was our recruiting and retaining employees. Because that's becoming an issue for all state agencies. But I like to say particularly ODOT because I'm living it. But we're, we're having trouble recruiting and retaining. Part of that problem is, is certainly salaries. You know, we've heard state employees haven't had an increase in a decade and, and those kinds of things. But we've had, we've had uh, freedom here at the department to give salary adjustments based on the market. And we've done that. But the last time we did that was in 2012. It's been five years since we did that. That's something that we're going to have to take a look at. It's not only recruiting, but it's retaining. We, we're developing a high turnover rate again. Some classes, we're have, we don't have a high turnover rate because we can't get them here for them to leave. So our denominator is zero. We, don't, we can't get them in here. So we're going to be looking at that, and I'll be briefing the commission as we go along through that. Will you couple that with the challenge of our frozen benefit allowance that was frozen during the 2012 legislative session, so beginning in January of 2013, we've had the same benefit allowance, but I don't have to tell you business owners that the cost of insurance has gone up. The cost of insurance has gone up and we only have the opportunity to use one insurance company. That's health choice. And so they're comp there's no competition there, so we're going to we're going to use what we get. And the cost of that since 2012 has gone up $4,500. The employees are bearing the cost of that additional insurance. So while we've frozen their salaries or froze their benefit allowance, the folks who were here in 2012 are not making as much as they were. Their net income's gone down. So that's a continuing challenge for us, and again, that's something we're going to have to work on. There's some discussion at the Capitol about cross-the-board pay raises, okay. Doing something about the benefit allowance, okay. But I'm not inclined to wait. I'm more inclined to take the bull by the horn, so to speak, and try something. We've got to do something. The last thing I want to tell you, 
Did you guys know we moved a couple of bridges here in Oklahoma City? Did you happen to see that? Did you happen to hear that? Jeff Allen is sitting over here about three rows back. I wish Jeff would raise his hand. Will you raise your hand, Jeff? <laughs> raise your hand, Jeff. Thank you. That's about all you're going to get out of Jeff Allen. He's a humble man who, who has a, a great construction company, one of, one of the best. We have many, but Jeff was, Jeff was elected to do this project. He actually volunteered for it. He, along with American Bridge, put together a plan working with Division Four and Brian Taylor and his staff to move these bridges in place. It's a big deal for Oklahoma. I had to go out there. I, I mean, I didn't add anything to it, but it's just cool stuff. I mean, at some point, you just got to stand back and marvel at it. So we had about 18,000 people watching it live streamed on our website. Those 18 people, 18,000 people came from the United States and 33 foreign countries. I dare say, while we didn't run them through a turnstile or sell them a ticket, I'm going to guess we had somewhere between five and 600 people sitting in our bleachers, looking down on the game from the 50th Street Bridge in those two days. What was really interesting to me was the number of retired ODOT employees that came out to watch it. The guys who wanted to do something like that, could have done something like that when they were still here, they just lacked a little bit of money. Well, we're in the good, good spot to have some money to make some substantial changes. I can, I've congratulated everybody a thousand times. I just, uh, I wish to congratulate everybody that was involved. Our media relations folks were out there, NPR was there, along with our video guys, recording everything. Media guys were handling the media, and thank you to the media for being there, continuing to educate our public on what was going on. We we're going to close the interstate, find another route, come out, join us. We had live Facebook. Anybody watch live Facebook? I do now, but I didn't before, before I was on it. I want to thank those folks for making all this happen. I did ask Bart and his team to put together a short video. Not enough time for popcorn, but a short video. Just to give you a sense of it, I know that some of you watched it on, through live streaming. You've probably seen a video or two, but Bart, if you could run that video for us and we'll call this a wrap. A major infrastructure project for the state of Oklahoma. You won't find a bridge like this in our state and probably not even in this area of the United States. You're witnessing a historical event. The event that you're witnessing here today is probably the single most important step in the overall completion of this new interchange at I-235 and I-44. We're spanning extreme lengths, almost the length of a football field, each one of them. They're approximately the height of a five-story building. The last truss that ODOT built was in 1960 on uh, Bird Creek, US 169 over Bird Creek, north of Tulsa. It's uh, the largest project right now in ODOT's history as far as dollar values. This is an urban interstate. It's the productivity pipeline for the economic center of the state of Oklahoma. I have a two million pound, two truss of, of a rail bridge over I-235 is a big deal. The trust that's in place here is the right structural solution. We are in a location where we couldn't raise the railroad grade very much. We couldn't lower the grade of I-235, so we needed a shallow superstructure. And this is really the only type of structure that can span 275 feet and carry train loads, not decrease our vertical clearance on, on I-235. To see it firsthand is amazing, to see two million pounds of iron rolling down the highway. 
over time we've been able to put this together and get this plan working. This project is one that will rebuild the main line on 235 through here and relocate the railroad. And that was the single most important part of this whole interchange is getting that railroad moved over to allow us to rebuild the interstate. First time it's ever happened in the state of Oklahoma and I'm really proud to be a part of it. I want to congratulate our secretary, Secretary Patterson and his team at the Department of Transportation, Allen Construction, the American Bridge Company. It's done a tremendous job. Mr. Chairman, I think you'd agree, after seeing that video, as our bridge engineer, Steve G Jacoby, said, it went swimmingly. <laughs> I'd be happy to answer any questions. Right, and quickly. And, and quickly. And early. We finished early. Great, great job. Uh, met my wife's specifications, too, so everything was perfect. <laughs> um, you know, I just wanted to to make sure that we all understand that the Trump requirements requiring participation uh, aren't going to change. We are participating, but it, it doesn't mean that we're going to get more help. It means there's going to be more availability if we're able to match funds, able to uh, participate in their new plan. And we're really at a standstill, minus, because we had an eight-year uh, budget that we trimmed off and took projects out which we had never done before right. and now we it's smaller uh, and you know I know that our state economy is improving and has improved at least to the level of last year's budget but that doesn't uh, get teachers a pay raise it doesn't build prisons it doesn't restore ODOT's budget or do any other new things like give us a uh, flexibility. Um, we all know there's places we could cut and trim and make government more efficient. We've seen the problems that have been uncovered. But we simply, at the Department of Transportation, need to be funded differently. And it needs to be direct, consistent, because we know if we have consistent funding, we can do projects cheaper. You know, a 20-year-old feasibility study doesn't do us much good. So if we conduct a feasibility study that has no funding solution, it's shame on us. Uh, those things aren't happening here anymore. You know, we've, we've made this place more efficient because we are now able to pl plan properly. And I know nobody in this room wants that to change. Planning anticipation makes this department better and you know there's going to be a lot going on across the street today but we all need to keep in mind here that the great things that's been accomplished and they truly have been great that bridge is great the bridge in Tishomingo we moved over that was great you know responding to the knockdown bridge that was great uh, replacing our bridges uh, you know, what we've done in Oklahoma City, what we've done in Norman, what we've done in Tulsa, but we're not, we're still not even close to having a program that addresses all our needs. And, you know, I know every state agency wants to cry about we don't have too much money, we don't have, I mean, we don't have enough money, we don't have enough money, but our state is carried on the back of the infrastructure that you guys have built. And we don't ever need to forget that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? <clears throat> yeah, I had one comment uh, on back to the bridge. Um, and we've got the existing uh, BN bridge that we'll have to demo out. Yes. And talking with my uh, division engineer, Brian Taylor, we're kind of thinking that is going to happen in maybe a month or so. Mm -hmm. But that'll require another shutdown of 235. Yeah. So I'm sure Terry and everybody will make sure to communicate that out like we did. Yes, sir. We will. By the way, great job 
you and your department and keeping everybody informed and uh, you guys do great work. What else? Motion to adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. Second. We have a second. Everybody vote. We're adjourned. <laughs>